Welcome back to the Survival Guide in Mathematics. I'm Adam Jacobson. Today we will discuss some very useful rules in algebra. And then you might ask, why would we do that? Well, as an economist, or indeed if you're a mathematician, you quite often work with long and tedious equations that you want to make simpler and you want to solve them for different types of variables for x or y or z or something. And when you want to do that it is super nice and useful and time-saving to know these simple algebraic rules. So without further ado let's begin. Okay so some useful rules of algebra. And it's all about manipulating different types of expressions that are a part of equations. And here is one expression, a functional expression that you can manipulate in a very useful way. So the following. Let's say we have a plus b and it's a square and this is squared. And uh, we can in fact expand this. and. Uh, Let's start by doing that in a methodical way. Uh, so this is the same as saying that a and b is multiplied by itself. So it's a plus b times a plus b. And we can expand this even further. And we do that in the following way. First you start by multiplying this a by that a. So this is then equal to a squared, a times a. Then you continue by multiplying the first term in this parenthesis times the second term, which is b. So a times b, so there's a plus and there's a b. Then you move on to the second term of the first parenthesis, which is b. Multiply that by the first term here, which is a. Right? So it's plus b a and finally you multiply b by b. Plus and that is b squared. Okay, so this is the, the nice and methodical way of expanding this. And this is then going to be equal to, and if we haven't made a mistake, this is in fact still equal to a plus b to the power of 2 and when we uh, collect the terms here we see that uh, we have first we have a square then we have plus and please note that a b is the same thing as b times a so then that means that we have 2 a times b and finally plus b squared. And this is in fact the rule. So this, now that you learned it, you should memorize it. So any expression that looks like this can also be written like that. And vice versa, if you see something that looks like that, it can be written like this. Okay, let's move on uh, and you may encounter other expressions in mathematics and here's yet another one. Let's say you encounter the following thing. a minus b to the power of 2. Okay, what is that going to be? Well, uh, let's do the same thing as with the previous one and expand this. So that is in fact a minus b times a minus b. Okay, and then we continue in the same way as we did up here. We multiply these terms from the first parenthesis with the terms in the second one. And what do we get? Well, first we have a times a, that's a squared. And then we have a times minus b, that's minus ab. Then we move on to minus b times a, so that's minus b a and finally we have minus b times minus b and something minus times something minus becomes something plus, right? So that means we have plus b squared. 
And this is then hopefully going to be equal to what we started with, namely a minus b to the power of 2, a minus b to the power of 2. And now we simplify this and we see that, okay, we have a to the power of 2. And then we have two of these. And remember, a times b is the same thing as b times a. And even if you put a minus sign in front of them, it's going to be the same thing. So we have two of those, minus 2ab, and finally, plus b squared. And this is the second rule I want you to learn and then memorize. Very useful. Okay, there are even more expressions in mathematics. Well, probably an infinite amount, but here's one common one that I would like you to get familiar with. You may find, you, uh, you, may, you may come across the following, uh, namely, a plus b times a minus b. Okay, so what is this going to be equal to? Well, let's start by multiplying the terms in the first parenthesis by the terms in the second one. So then we have a times a, that's a squared, and then we have a times minus b, that's minus a b, then move on, we move on to b here, so it's b times a plus b times a, and finally b times minus b, that is minus b squared. And rewriting this, let's repeat the starting point, which was a plus b times a minus b. And now we can see, can we simplify this? Well, this is going to remain, right? a to the power of 2, and we're going to have minus b2 as well. Uh, what about these? Remember, a b is the same thing as b a, and here we have plus b a minus b a, which is zero. So this whole thing, this goes away. So we are left with minus b squared. And that is also a very useful rule to remember. So now let's do one example of the last one here. Let's say you see the following expression. Uh, 1 minus 4x to the power of 2. Now, could, could this be some representation of this more general rule? For example, for example a to the power of 2, could, could that be 1? Yeah, 1 times 1, that is, that is 1. What about b squared? What would be the could, could this be a, a minus b squared here? Yes, if you have 2x times 2x, that's 4x squared, right? So then we know that we can rewrite this in the following way. 1 plus 2x times 1 minus 2x. So this is just one simple example of how you can apply this rule. So if we see this, that means that we saw something that look, is on this form, then we know that we can rewrite it in this form, which corresponds to this. So again, this highlights the use of knowing these rules, because then you can with ease switch between different representations, re representations of different expressions, and that can indeed help you when simplifying and working with equations. And uh, let me give you a few more examples. And also another technique that is very useful when you're working with equations, especially when you want to simplify them, is the technique of factoring. So let me give you examples of that. So firstly, example one. Uh, let's say you have the following ratio. 63 divided by 60. Now these are two rather big numbers and it would be nice to, could we break it down a bit? Could we have smaller numbers so it would be more uh, clear what, what it says here? Uh, yes, we can do that, but the technique we're going to use is going to be factoring. So the number 63 
Could we factorize that? Something multiplied by something, is that equal to 63? Yes, if you know your multipli multiplicative tables, you will know that this is indeed 9 times 7, right? That is 63. And likewise, can we factorize this? Yes, for example, it's 6 times 10, right? Okay, so now we are breaking up these large numbers into smaller factors. Um, does this help us here? Could we? Does anything eliminate anything here? Not really. So we can go, go on by continuing factoring these numbers. So can we factor 7? That is 1 times 7, so it doesn't really help us. What about 9? Yes, that's 3 by 3, right? 3 times 3 times 7. And we can perhaps continue with the denominator. 6. Can we factor that? Yes, we can. That's 2 by 3. 2 times 3 times and 10. Can we factorize that? Yes, 2 by 5. Now, do we see any scope for simplification here? Yes, we can find a 3 here and a 3 there. And when everything is multiplied here in the denominator and in the denominator, we can you can see this separately and see 3 divided by 3, that's 1. So we can they we say that they cancel out. So take them away. Like that. There's just one. The number one is remaining, and we don't need to write that out. So this is then going to be this ratio is 3 times 7, that's 21, divided by 2 times 2 is 4 times 5 is 20. And here we can see that by using the technique of factoring, by factoring 63 and factoring 60 and breaking it down as far as we can, we saw that, oh yes, there is scope for simplification. But these two threes, they cancel out. So we can simplify this and we end up with this. So that's a very nice and neat example uh, in the noble art of simplification. Why complicate things? So uh, moving on to the next example. Right, uh, let's say you have this expression. Uh, in the denominator you have a to the power of 2 minus b to the power of 2 divided by a to the power of 2 plus 2ab plus b2. Okay, hmm, you say, you recognize these expressions to the denominator here. Was that rule number three? And the denominator, hmm, could that have been rule number one? Let's see. So a2 minus b2, we go back. Ah, a2 minus b2, ah, that's equal to this. Yeah, let's write that and see what happens. That's a way of factoring, right? So this denominator is equal to a plus b times a minus what about the denominator? I said something about, ah, what about rule number one? Yes, a squared plus 2ab plus b squared, that's a plus b squared. So, which we have here, so it's a plus b squared. And this we can factor even more, right? So you will rewrite the whole expression. So in the denominator, we still have a plus b times a minus b divided by a plus b times a plus b. And yes, we can now simplify because a plus b divided by a plus b, that's one, right? So we can forget about this and just have one here, which we don't need to write. So we can just say that these two cancel out. And hence, we have a much smaller and nicer and simpler expression, namely the following. A minus B divided by A plus B. So here you see a concrete example of the use of memorizing some of these rules, because this could be factorized, this be, and this could be simplified and then factored, and we end up with this. Very nice. 
So let's look at example number three. So let's say you encounter the following expression, a sort of messy ratio of ratios. So it's A over B divided by C over D. Okay, so this is a very tall expression, and it, at least in my taste, this is, no, I would rather work with something else. You want to move this thing up here, so that you're on one row, only in the, de in the denominator, right? You want to sort of get rid of the denominator if you can. But you can't just change this number here, this expression, because you can't change its value, right? So, but we can sort of think, how could we, how would we eliminate this? How would we make this cancel out somehow? Well, uh, let's rewrite this first expression again. A divided by B, which is then divided by C divided by D. So now if we want this to be one, because if we're one here, we're fine, right? So how would this become one? Well, it would become one if we multiply C over D by D over C. So let's do that, D divided by C. Now we've done something to the denominator. But in order for this to have the same value as before, we must do the same thing to the nominator because, yeah, we will see why in a moment, d divided by c. And now we see that, okay, we multiply the nominator by this number and we multiply the denominator by the same number and these two, they cancel out to become one, right? Mm -hmm. So that doesn't change the value of this. Multiply something by one doesn't change it at all. But now let's, uh, it's a longer expression. Yes, it is. But we see that the C here cancel out this C and this D here cancel out this D. Cancel, 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 cancel. So this is cancel culture. Okay, uh, right. So anyway, moving on quickly. Uh, we see that we are now left with a over b times d over c. Now this, in my view, is much easier to work with than this here. And this is a long way of doing it, you know, the proper way, sort of, you know, how do we get from here to here? Well, we do this, and this is why we do that. And we end up here. So a quick way of thinking uh, of so jumping from here to here, if you remember our discussion previously about powers, if you have a ratio and to the power of minus one that is equal to the inverse of that ratio to the power of one. Okay, so which is the same thing as here. Here we have this nominator divided by c over d. That is the same thing as c over d, uh, a over b times c over d to the power of minus one. And we can thus multiply a over b by the inverse of c over d, which is what we do here d over c, that is the inverse of c of d, c divided by d. So, and we talked about that last time, and here you have an example of an, a derivation of why that is so. So, that's uh, yet another example of different techniques on how you can simplify equations. And when you do these things, take your time, because another golden rule is slow is smooth and smooth is fast. Thank you very much and bye.